a six pin that is a challenge in dealing with numerical growth in the church is that your personal fellowship may suffer. If we go back to Acts chapter 6 and uh, we, we, we read in verse 4, they, they, they said to them in verse 3 and 4, it says, Therefore, brethren, seek from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. If you are not careful, numerical growth will take you away from what is crucial and distract you from personal fellowship with God. You will end up focusing only on meeting one need or the other or trying to work miracles, signs and wonders or preparing sermons only just to go and preach, not feeding your own self, not having fellowship with the Lord. Let me, let me, let me read in John chapter 15. John 15 verse 1 to 7. This is the Lord Jesus Christ speaking. He said, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. I said this for context. Now, verse 4, down. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, Unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Recognize this. this the, the, the essence of the Lord Jesus Christ telling us that parable or that story or that giving us the divine and the branches is to tell us that unless we are connected with him, unless we remain connected with him, we're going to be in trouble. So personal fellowship can suffer when there is a lot of a lot of people to attend to, and then you start, you almost tear yourself apart. And you have a problem. Remember that in Mark chapter 3, verse 14 and 15, when the Lord Jesus Christ chose the apostles, the Bible says that he chose them that they might be with him. And that's what the apostles were complaining that ah, you want us to live uh, to, uh, to abandon prayer, to abandon the word, to abandon our fellowship with the Lord and come and be serving tables? Absolutely not. We're not going to do that. But of course, they had to deal with the problem also. Just like in the case where you had the, the, the devil sowing seed that in, the, in the same garden that God had sown his own seed. The solution is a spiritual solution. It's not a physical solution. Many of us think that it's getting organized. But organization by itself, if you are not careful, can actually stifle the work of God. People get so caught up with organization that they lose fellowship with God. And at the end of the day, what do you have in, the, in, our, in our denominations and our churches? We begin to address spiritual things as though they were carnal issues. We begin to address them as though they were secular issues. We even advertise for secular administrators to come and run the body of Christ. Whether or not they have been born again, in some cases, it's not even the issue. In some big, massive denominations, these people are so lost in the whole thing that they don't even care who, they, they cannot even tell who you are. They just know that that brother comes to church. That's the end. So you, you, it is easy to hide. Like I said, strange people enter in. It's very easy to hide in, 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 a, in um, a, a, a church where numerical growth is, 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 is increasing. 